Um, so tonight's topic that we we're going to talk about was um, what is the fair judge looking for? So with those building exhibits, what are they looking for? Um, so I am going to start off with a document that's project area versus exhibit. Um, so when you say exhibit, when you say project, um, a lot of times those two terms are interchangeable. Um, after I share this with you, I will go ahead and put it in the, the chat if you want to download it. So let me see if I can get my screen shared. Megan's been doing a lot of the sharing lately, so it's throwing me off a little bit. <laughs> So here is our first thing. So the difference between a 4-H project and a 4-H exhibit, what is it? Each year, 4-H members um, enroll in project areas that are interest to them. They then set goals to plan what they will learn in each project area. Um, when they bring it, bring in a thing to a fair or to the fair, those items are called exhibits. So kind of just uh, picture visuals here. Um, project area is broad topics and you can that you can learn and explore. Exhibits are things that you make um, or do that you want to share what you have learned. So example, up there at the top, it says practicing goal setting um, and managing responsibility in a project area. So it looks like pigs over there. Your exhibit then is your physical animal that you could bring to the fair. Okay, so there's just kind of the difference in that one. Um, your project area, so learning equipment and materials related to your project area. So the picture that they have there is sewing. The exhibit would be the outfit that you make, um, participating in a style show, doing a demonstration or a presentation um, about those items that you learned. So that's the physical exhibit. Um, Last one there, it says, try a variety of recommended techniques related to your project area. So looks like woodworking there and then exhibit could be that physical project. So not always is the first item I make fair quality. Um, so, but taking and learning the process is more of a project area learning, whereas the exhibit is that final thing that you want to take and share with a judge. I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. So that I can share my screen. Maybe. Yes. Okay. So the next thing that we were going to chat about is our different 4-H evaluations. I'm going to show them to you. Um, and then, like Marcy, I'll throw them in the chat so that you can download those as well. They are accessible on our Polk County Fair Iowa website. Um, the first one that you're seeing here on your screen is our 4-H exhibit evaluation. And this is for almost every project area, minus food and nutrition and photography. They have their own separate ones, which I will show to you here in just a second. Uh, so this is what a judge is gonna fill out. And this is what a judge is considering as they judge those exhibits. Um, They'll fill out, you know, the name and that stuff and the ribbon. But then you'll see here there's a uh, learning involved, workmanship and techniques, which is the product and the idea, and then general appearance and design. And so that judge can then leave comments with each of those um, categories and then also say if it was very good or if there's some improvement needed. Um, Usually if there's improvement needed, that judge is going to explain what that improvement is that is needed. Uh, but if you have questions or anything like that, after you get an evaluation back, you can let us know and we can help interpret that. The next one, and let's see if I did this correctly. So you should be seeing food and nutrition now. Uh, this is our food and nutrition evaluation and it is for food and nutrition products. So this one has a couple of different um, categories and it goes a little bit more in depth because it is that food and nutrition project area. So the learning involved includes the goals, the learning or plan of action, and then problem solving. Um, and just like the other sheet, they have very good or improvement needed some and much and room for comments. 
And then after that is the product workmanship techniques and appearance. Um, and that appearance is slightly different for food. So is it appealing? Is it appetizing? What's the color like? Um, what are the characteristics? Is it bread? Is it risen or has it sunk in? Um, those kind of things for their appearance. Um, aroma. So what does that smell like? Does it smell like it should or does something smell off about it? Um, they're going to judge based on flavor, uh, texture and consistency, as well as tenderness or technique, depending on what that food item is. Now, obviously not every food item has all of these categories and they will take that into account when judging. Um, all of our judges go through a judge's training and food and nutrition is one that actually goes through a little bit more of an intensive training before they're allowed to judge county fairs here in Iowa. Um, and then the last one I'm gonna show up here is our photography exhibit evaluation. Um, and this one goes into a little bit more in depth with the photography project area. Uh, so it's gonna look at well-defined photography goal. Um, they want a goal that is specific to that photography area and not, I wanted to take a picture. So they want to look for goals that are, I wanted to work with the exposure on my camera, or I wanted to learn more about the rule of thirds uh, in taking photos. They're also going to judge on the technical factors, uh, the impact of the photo, composition, and then how you displayed your photo. So did you have it printed matte or glossy? Did you mount it? Did you mount it flush or did you mount it with a border? Um, we are fortunate that Hopefully someday we'll be able to have a photo mounting workshop um, with some map cutters that were donated to us by a former 4-H volunteer. So be on the lookout for that before the next county fair. Our goal was to do it before this county fair, but it just didn't quite work out. Um, but our goal is to be able to have a map cutting workshop before the next county fair. All right, I'm unmuted. It's always my challenge. Um, so I am going to share the next one. So Megan talked about what the blank um, evaluations look like. I have a couple evaluations I am going to share with you. Let's see which one I got. Um, I believe it should be the photography one first, correct, Megan? Up here at the top. Okay, I have them both up on my other screen, so I wanted to make sure I was showing and talking about the right one. Um, so these are actual evaluations from the Iowa State Fair this year. Um, those exhibits that advanced on, we have their evaluations currently here in the office. We're waiting for ribbons uh, from the state. So I had these sorted, so I was able to pull these um, out for us. Um, so we are just looking here. So well-defined goal, it looks like um, they didn't mark that one, but I'm guessing based on the fact that it was blue, there must have been a decent goal. Then the tech, the technical factors, they just said they marked it as very good. Um, composition, they thought the location of the subject and point of interest needed a little bit of improvement. Rule of thirds also needed a little bit of, of improvement. So if I remember correctly, this, this had of the sheep was fairly centered in the project. Um, and then if I look down here just at the things, it says I really like this photo. I'm impressed you were able to get a shot just by learning to use your brother's camera. Um, I love that you learned about his camera because sometimes phone camera photos are just not as good. Um, I think you did a good job of eliminating much of the background distraction as you could. Uh, the sheep is really in focus. However, he is right in the middle of the photo. When um, composing photos in the future, you want to keep in mind the rule of thirds. I'm glad you cropped off the white ear tag um, on the right in the matted version as it was distracting in the print version. Um, Overall, great photo, and you have a bright future as a photographer. Keep up the good work. So um, an evaluation, most of the time they're going to be educational as well as informative, informative of what you did um, correctly and what maybe some things you worked on. So there were some things there um, that that young person is going to be able to take and expand on for the next project. 
So I'm going to switch over to the other one that I have here. Um, let's see if I bring up the right one this time. Should be home improvement, correct, Megan? Nod of the head, thumbs up, perfect. Okay, so this was a home improvement project, same thing. Um, so in here, it kind of tells you what we're going to talk about a little bit next, too. Um, good job measuring more than multiple times and cutting once. Uh, measure twice, cut, cut once. I've always heard that as a motto. Um, planning to decide a visual plan helps you bring the project together. So you must have said something about that. And then there's some questions. So if just looking at these questions, I when I judge different items, it thinks, okay, this information wasn't in there, but it'd be good to know. Um, especially if a project advances onto the state fair, that information is very important to have in your write-up, which is Megan's next thing. So it said, how did you decide on your length of your board? Um, apparently it was a scrap piece of wood, um, was great. Uh, the cyclone di design was very unique in 3D, um, in the way it sits off the barn wood. The pieces all looked um, good and smooth. Got to remember they were judging off of photographs. They weren't able to have the physical item there in front of them, so it's probably a little bit harder. Um, staining is even and cyclone placement looks nice. Uh, spacing between each, um, I'm assuming word or letter is good. Uh, wood burning, um, your name was very evenly and nicely spaced, easy to read, and then you get a few more questions here. So um, did you use a protectant on it? Um, did you wear safety and power tools um, so that you were using big equipment? Did you learn safety factors? Did you have that? That's kind of a big one it comes to woodworking and handling those tools. They want to know that you're doing it safely to use those practices. Um, good write-up, some more details here. Where did you get the idea from? Um, just kind of some different information of what goes underneath each of those. I'm gonna stop sharing. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna chat about is a four, uh, 4-H write-up example. Uh, this is what will be done for just about every project. The exception would be photography. Um, and I realize I don't have a photography one open, but we can share that with you as well. Um, the top of the page, they're going to want your name. Um, the 4-H level, so if you're a junior, which is fourth through sixth grade and intermediate, which is seventh and eighth grade, or a senior, which is ninth through twelfth grade, they're going to want your club, and then they're going to want the project area and class number. And you'll be able to find those in the fair book. If you're confused about what your class number is or anything, let us know. We're happy to help. That's our jobs. Um, but that is the number you're going to use to uh, enter the item in the county fair. So that'll help. Uh, the next thing that will happen is you're going to answer the question, what was your goal or goals? So this is what did you want to learn or learn to do? And what did you want to share or teach others? So this could be as simple as I wanted to learn how to refinish a old chair. And it could be more complex than that too. A lot of that is based off of the age level of the youth and the amount of years in that project. Um, the next part is going to be, how did you go about working toward your goal or goals? So this is your process. This is how you started and then all the way through to where you finished. So why you selected this project area, why it was important, um, your step-by-step -step process of how you completed the project and what you liked most about the project um, or what was the hardest. Judges love to read what you learned um, as well, which is why that's the next question. Um, examples of project specific items to include in project areas, um, elements and principles of design are needed for some of them. They are home improvement, uh, visual arts, sewing and needle arts, clothing and fashion, and other family and consumer sciences. 
Those can be found on a website that is linked there. We can also include that in the chat. Um, and we are also planning on doing another office hour um, related to elements and principles of design to help you out. Um, they love to see photos of yourself in the process of making the project. So if you're making a leather belt, they want to see photos of you learning how to tool that leather, um, how to stain it. They love to see budget information. So how much it costs you to do that project. Um, and if it was something that you had to, you know, save money for to do, or if you had to apply for any sort of financial assistance to get that project done. For food and nutrition, it is required that you have a recipe and recipe source, and Pinterest is not a source. Uh, we get this at least once or twice a year where a youth will just say that they found it on Pinterest. Um, and Pinterest is a great website for ideas. It's a great place to, to spring off of and find some things you want to do, but it is not a source in itself. Um, so you need to go further with Pinterest and find where that originated. Um, your recipe could be from anywhere. You could have found it in a church cookbook. You could have gotten it from your great grandmother. Um, they just want to know where you got it. Um, for visual arts, they like to know where you got your inspiration, what materials you used, and what your process was. They do require the elements and principles of design. Um, and the sketch or drawing of your idea. So if you were starting out, you wanted to make something um, a sculpture, did you have blueprints to start that with? Um, they want the original photo if you're painting from a picture. And with those, you do need to be careful because copyright is a big thing. Um, there's always a couple projects a year that do get disqualified because they do not have the proper copyright permissions. Um, a lot of work out there will give you copyright permission. You just have to seek it out. And if you do not have those permissions, we are not able to display those items at the county or state fair, and they will be disqualified, unfortunately. Um, photography has a separate form. It can be found there. Let's see if I can get this to work without messing up. It's going to say it's in the chat box. Oh, uh oh, I got to. opening. All right, so now you should be able to see the photography. Mercy? Yes? Okay, yes. Um, so this is our photography exhibit label. It looks a little different. Um, it's still going to require the same stuff there at the top, um, your name, your county or club, county and club uh, grade, the years that you've been in the photography project area, um, the date the photo was taken, and where the photo was taken. So those are those first questions up there. And then their questions are, what did you plan to learn or do? And what was your photography goal? And they want these to be photography specific. Um, that is the biggest thing and the most important thing with photography goals. And then what did you do? So explain what you did so the judge easily understands it, what steps you took to take that picture or to edit that picture. Um, and the next thing they want to know is things about your camera. So was it a digital camera? Did you take it on a phone or a tablet? Did you use a film camera? Um, and then the brand and model information. Um, and if you used lenses to take your photo. Uh, or what you might have used instead. And then if you edited that photo, what changes did you make to the original photo to create your final exhibit? Um, so list any changes and explain your decisions. So cropping, color enhancement, size, removal of red eye, those kind of things. And if possible, include the original photo. Um, it doesn't have to be huge, just like a small um, scan of the original photo and stick that on the back. Um, that way the judge will be able to tell what changes you made and then um, explain why you selected the finished photo size. Um, and then scrolling down here a little bit. So who designed and selected the matting or mounting? Um, so that can be you. That can be, you know, if you got help with that process, they just want to know that. They want to know who mat matted or mounted the photo. Um, and again, that can be you or if you got assistance with that process, that is fine. 
they just like to know that information. And then what were the most important things you learned? So this is where you talk about what you learned while you were taking this photo. Did you learn more about the rule of thirds? Did you learn that it was difficult to take photos of children because they are squirmy? Um, what did you learn as you took this photo? And then the fifth one is, what other information about your photo process would you like to share? So this one is a little bit more open-ended of a question for the photography area. Um, and it's what last little bit of information you want that judge to know about your photo. Um, especially if your photo is going to state fair, this is important because that judge is not going to get to speak with you personally. Um, so if there's anything else you wanna share, that is your time to do so. Um, going back here to the other screen. So, um, for horticulture, um, you want to identify the plant type in description when entering it on fair entry. So, uh, tomato red slicing, um, just so that we know what it is, you can refer to our fair book for those classes, or if you're taking horticulture to the state fair, that would be in their fair book. Um, and then the next question, this is a required one. What were the most important things you learned as you worked towards your goals? Um, so what you learned and what you changed or did differently? Um, did you slightly alter a recipe? Did you learn about copyright? Um, did you learn how to use a bandsaw? Did you learn how to stain wood? Um, you know, talk about those things that you learned for this project specifically. Um, and then you can also check the fair book there for more information on all of the project areas. And we're gonna talk a little bit later about hot sheets. And then the last question there is, what would you like to do in this project area next year? So how do you want to expand on the knowledge that you gained this year for next year? If this year you sewed your first pillowcase, your goal was to learn how to use your sewing machine. Uh, next year, maybe you want to expand on that. You want to make something a little bit more intricate. Um, so this is also a good time to start working on your goal for next year um, and keep track of that so that you know what you want to do in the future. I believe that is the All right, so my next section doesn't have a screen to share with you, um, but it is about how items are judged. So Iowa 4-H uses the Danish system of judging. Um, rather than competing against someone else, youth challenge themselves to create exhibits that represent their best. The Danish system places um, exhibits in groups representing standards met. Judging is intended to educate, evaluate, and encourage. So then the ribbons that, so the purple, which would be state fair, or state fair alternate, means the exhibit exceeded standards and it's the highest ribbon awarded. Um, blue means the exhibit met all standards well. Uh, red means the, ex uh, the exhibit met some standards well, but could use improvement on other standards. A white means the exhibits, exhibit needs improvement on many of the standards and is missing some critical information to evaluate. Do you have the tip sheets open or do you need them, Megan? Nope, I have them, we're good. I was just moving them to the correct screen so that I could share them. All right, and so the last thing that we just wanted to talk about tonight before we open it up to general questions was our Iowa 4-H exhibit tip sheets or hot sheets. So just about, or no, I shouldn't say just about, every project area out there has a exhibit tip sheet or hot sheet. And this has information specifically for that area. So this, the first one up here is child development. What is that judge looking for specifically in child development? And um, I can maybe bounce through a few of these. So it says what the judge is looking for in citizenship. It also has what to avoid. Um, and it has those kind of things on a lot of these. So um, we're gonna link this as well. It is also on the website for you to look through. Um, and if you have any questions about these, it's also a great place to get started in a project area if you don't know exactly what you want to do. Um, 
yeah, you can go through just about any, any project out there for a tip sheet. Are there any questions? I was going to say, I know we went through it rather quickly. Um, we just wanted to give a highlight of some of the information um, and wanted to see what questions. Thank you for watching. For more information on Polk County 4-H programming, connect with us by email at polk4h at iastate.edu or by phone at 515-957-5760.